Cheers, people. Welcome back to another transfer roundup, and we have huge Alvarez news today. Not news that I really want to be talking about, but it is the news that is happening. You've all seen it, Atletico Madrid, £75 million around that. We'll get into that just in a second. But first, do us a favour, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we'll get straight into all the transfer news that's been popping today because it has been popping. Unfortunately, I was stuck on the M62 when all this started popping off. Uh, but we have brought the transfer roundup. I'll give you my thoughts on everything that's been going on today. So, firstly, Alex Robertson is set to join Cardiff City from Man City from a million uh, plus a significant sell-on clause. So, Alex Robertson uh, going to Cardiff. Obviously, we had the news yesterday about uh, Alex Robertson and that potentially happening. So, uh, good luck to Alex Robertson at Cardiff City. Um, he's going to undergo a medical at Cardiff today ahead of a permanent move from City in a deal that could eventually be worth in the region of £3 million. So, £3 million for Alex Robertson. Um, Mohamedou Sissoho. Now, we've seen this guy a bit. Um, and, yeah, I think it looks all right. And um, he's joining Peterborough on a season long loan. So, hopefully, he, he has a good season over there. Um, and, yeah, there's not really much to say on that. Like, hopefully, hopefully he does well. He can do bits. And uh, there's always a potential that you can come back and be a City starter. Uh, but, yeah, another another Academy product going out there on loan somewhere. And that's Jack Gorn saying that as well, so you, you can trust it. Uh, next up, Fabrizio Romano saying that Middlesbrough have agreed a fee in the region of £3.5 million for Mika Hamilton and City will have a buyback clause of around £11 million. Mika Hamilton, absolutely insane. As if he's gone on uh, and moved on permanently elsewhere. But we do have a buyback. I think we're doing this quite a lot there is um, a restriction on how many loan players do you remember when a few years ago Chelsea had like 30 players on loan just cutting about so the Prem were like yeah we can't really do this anymore so because of that loan restriction it, it's basically encouraging the club now to, to sell these players with buyback clauses in and then it's it's fair from bo for both sides really but hopefully Mick Hamilton does well um, obviously we've he's not we've not seen him too much in a City shirt but from what we've seen he did well um, Finley Burns another City Academy player tying it it's all about the Academy players today uh, it's set to join Hull City on loan with no buy clause included in the deal. Um, the 21-year-old will undergo a medical at Hull on Tuesday. So he's going to have a medical at Hull tomorrow. That's Fabrizio Romano as well saying this. Now, we've got rid of what's been happening with the academy, but a first-team player is exiting Manchester City. Julian Alvarez is going to Atletico Madrid. A moment of silence, please, because I am very upset about this. My boy, my boy. Now, I know the, 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 there's rumours around our live streams and watch songs. I have an agenda on Alvarez, and that's not true in the slightest. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I understand, which is what makes it worse. I understand why he, he'd want to go and be the style boy somewhere else and play a striker. I've said this plenty, plenty of times. We don't play him in his position properly. Um, and when, when he does, it's very... Far and few between. Do you know what I mean it's 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 not where he wants to be. He wants to be in and around that box in his best position, not playing left wing, not playing in the centre mid next to Kev, not playing as a false nine. He wants to be a full on striker and he wants the game time and he probably deserves the game time. Look at his career so far. The guy's doing bits and I do believe he's gonna go on to do bits as well. Yeah, I'm 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 gutted that this is actually going through. I've kind of been in denial about this. If you watch back the previous transfer roundup videos, I've always said nah City won't sell him. Like kind of like edging towards the idea that City would not let him go so here's the news on this David Ornstein with the killer the killer blow says the fee paid by Atletico Madrid for Alvarez is expected to be at least five times the 14 million Man City paid River Plate in January 2022 significant progress has but has now been made since talks began last week Fabrizio Romano came out and also said Atletico Madrid have now improved their offer to Man City for Julian Alvarez during talks tonight with an official bid up to a 75 million package negotiations are being led by club CEOs Gil Martin and and Ferran Soriano and Julian Alvarez has been told by Atletico Madrid that he will be their franchise player. He is going to be that guy. Um, David Ornstein also said that Atletico Madrid are close to uh, striking a deal with City to sign Julian Alvarez. Uh, total agreement has yet to be reached, uh, but that's now in sight with talks at the stage of negotiation, uh, negotiating the final price and payment structure. So Julian Alvarez is leaving Manchester City. Rip the band-aid off, it's done. 
He's he's gone. My now my attention now really turns to what City doing this. We know that we're kind of moving in a, in a way where one in one out. We've been doing this for the past few seasons now. Julian Alvarez is not a player that leaves and you don't replace. Haaland's injury records a bit so so every so often. Do you know what I mean? We know that he can he can go periods out of the team. Now, we can run, run Phil Ford and false nine. I get that, but I think we need to replace Julian Alvarez. If you're going to double down on false nine, go get someone else who can play there or play in around that middle. I've seen Eze be a name that's been thrown out there. £60 million, you can go sign Ebrecht Eze from Crystal Palace. That, for me, is a good move. Um, I'd like to least say, do you know what I mean? I'd like to least say he, he's the Mares region. I'd love that. But Ebrecht Eze... I'd be, going, I'd, I'd be seriously looking at that deal after this. I think he, he'd be good, a good player to put in the middle of the park. I think that's where that's, I think that's where my brain's going with it. Now, I, you might think, think we need a striker instead of like double down on false nine kind of thing, going to a midfielder. Um, obviously, Danny Olmo can play at a numerous positions, but he's now gone to Barcelona, so that's off the market. This is the issue with we wait for our players to kind of decide what they want to do. And then when that domino falls, then we make our moves. Like Bernardo Silva, we sit on Bernardo Silva and just wait. We just wait for him to decide what he wants to do. And then by the time he decides what to do, our main targets who we're looking to replace them players with, they could be gone elsewhere. That's that's just it's, it's the risk that we take with our strategy and the way that we work. Obviously, I trust the board fully. Um, I have no reason to not, to not trust the board in the sense that we've made some great signings over the past few years. So... I'm hoping that we get it right this year. I know that we missed out on a lot of top targets last year. I hope we get it right this year. Uh, the Bruno G thing's pretty dead, obviously, for midfield. Um, <laughs> everything's, everything's quiet at City. Everything's really quiet. It's all leaving, no incomings. Obviously, Savio's here, which is good. I'm really excited to see him play. He's got the 26 shirt, Riyad Mahrez's old shirt. Really excited to see him play. Hopefully, he can make a big impact in the team and do bits. Obviously, still quite young as well, so a lot to grow, but hopefully he can... Uh, he can smash it at City from season one onwards. I'd give him time, though. He needs a little bit of patience. But Julian Alvarez leaving does leave a gap for me. And it's a gap that we need to fill. Gutted about this. Genuinely gutted about this. Um, just because of how much of a talent he is. He was the Aguero slash Tevez regen. Do you know what I mean? Merge them two players together. Regen it and you get Julian Alvarez. So it's going to be horrible to watch from the sidelines as his career does bits. But at the same time... It's done now. We need to move on and we need to look at who we get in because I won't be sitting still now, City. I'd be moving on this. I'd be going getting someone else to fill that position. We, the one in win out system, right, one's gone. We need to get one in. I sound like spoiled brat. Uh, we do have a great team, do you know what I mean? But I do think that that, that position needs filling. Uh, so again, I said it yesterday. I've said it on a few videos, but now this is permanent. Who are you signing? Who are you signing? Who's the Julian Alvarez replacement? Is it false nine? Is it midfielder? Is it Eze? Is there a striker out there that you think can fit that void? Uh, but let me know in the comment section below. That's my short thoughts on Julian Alvarez leaving Manchester City. We'll get Big Steve thoughts tomorrow. Um, and we'll see what he has to say about Julian Alvarez leaving. Um, and we'll obviously speak about the derby at the weekend, things like that. Uh, so stay tuned for tomorrow. Big Steve show. Uh, be around one o'clock, two o'clock. So big up to everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. See you in a bit. Bye.